Come on, Judge Ray. Come on over here. Talk about reparations. I'll talk about the census before we go. Power to the people. Power to the people. Power to the people. Black Lives Matter. Reparations. Now. Reparations. Reparations. Now. Reparations. Now. If y'all don't know me, my name is Cheshire Adams. Born and raised in the city of Newark on High Street. Yeah, you know, back in the what the MLK was High Street. High Street. So, she want me to talk about reparations, but I'm going to mix that in with criminal justice. And I'm going to mix it in with criminal justice because I come from a criminal justice background. Being a former police officer here in the city of Newark, political science major, criminal justice minor. Kamala, we, we fight and we, and we disagree and we badger our black woman in Kamala Harris. And I put a post up to yesterday. I said, we're so mad at Kamala Harris, but we're not mad at the Attorney General right here in the state of New Jersey. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm gonna say that one more time. We're mad at Kamala Harris, but we're not mad at the Attorney General here in the state of New Jersey. Go ahead. Go ahead. Who has been silent, and has covered up every piece of evidence when it came to the murder of Maurice Gordon. Go ahead, go ahead. He has been silent and covered up every piece of evidence when it came to the murder of Maurice Gordon. Maurice Gordon wasn't shooting nobody, he wasn't fighting nobody, he wasn't molesting nobody, he wasn't abducting nobody. He was waiting for basically AAA to get his car. And he was murdered. Murdered murder. So I am upset because at 31 years old I shouldn't be fighting the same fight as Larry Ham did in 1971 when he did a walkout at Ars High. I'm mad at 31 years old because I shouldn't be fighting the same fight that my grandmother did in 1940 when she was born and marching up and down for the right to vote and the right to be counted as a citizen. I shouldn't be fighting the same fight that black people here in the city of Newark fought in 1967. 1967, when they burned this, I ain't gonna call it a riot, I'm gonna call it a rebellion. There it is. I don't call it a riot, I call it a rebellion. Yes. When they were tired of, of their rights being violated. See, I got a little history from my grandmother. North, black Norcas couldn't even walk downtown. That's right. Black Norcas couldn't even walk in Irvington. Black people couldn't work, walk in Irvington, period. That's right. So when you ask me why I'm upset, I'm upset because I'm fighting the same fight that I shouldn't be fighting, that my grandmother's fighting, and Larry Ham is fighting, and our elder here is fighting, and right here is fighting. I am upset, and I'm gonna continuously be upset. I joined the police department back in 2015 because the federal government came into this city and said that the North Police Department violated the rights of black and brown people unjustly in an enormous number. It wasn't being investigated. When I ran for office in 2014, I made a commitment to my city that whatever way they saw fit for me to serve my city, I was gonna do it. And that's when I became a police officer. Wow. But it wasn't enough. And the only reason why I'm mad at Brad Baraka is because he hired the, one of the biggest races in the North Police Department to head the North Police Department. And I'm not afraid to say it. I'm not afraid to say it. But I want people to always understand that just because I wore that uniform don't mean I wasn't being discriminated against. Because my color was still black. That's right. That's right. Yep. I didn't wear that uniform 24-7. My color was still black, whether in uniform or not. I was still being unjustly stopped in places like Bloomfield, T-Net, Woodbridge, Franklin, Jackson, Huntington County, Phillipsburg. I was still being unjustly stopped. My badge and my uniform meant nothing. At the end of the day, I was a black man in America. Wow. If you think ain't no injustice going on in the North Police Department, then ask these black police officers why they had the greatest number of suspensions than any other race in the North Police Department. Being suspended for 15 days for having their shoestrings untied. Being suspended for 15 days for telling somebody not to call them a bitch. Excuse my French. 
being suspended for 15 days because a white girl was afraid to be in the city of Norco. Her car was parked right down here in the parking lot after 1 o'clock. If you think there was justice is going on in the North Police Department, then why is it that every time a white man is involved in domestic violence that their crimes are swept under the rug, but a black police officer got to go to a site? It ain't fishing, it's facts. Oprah requested. So I know this is, I was a police officer, and I was probably one of the only police officers who, who was in favor of the Civilian Review Board when my FOP was against it. Wow. Fighting in the court today, am I right? right. Yep, yep, yep. Fighting in the court today. The only thing they ask for the civilian review board is have investigatory investigatory powers when it comes to civilian complaints. That's it. So let's tell the true narrative. Civilian complaints. Subpoena power for civilian complaints. Nothing else. Nothing else. But if we want to change the police department the way we police our communities, we need to stop training our police officers as if they in the, as they in war. We have to train our police, so we have to stop training our police officers as it is, as it is a mindset of them against us. We have to train the people who are in there who are there right now. Because I had a supervisor who told me that it is them against us. I had a supervisor who told me that if, before she even knew I came from Georgia King Village and High Street, that people who are from those places were nothing. Wow. Wow. Nothing. And I had to ask her, well, if I wasn't wearing this uniform, what are you going to think about me? What are you going to think about me? I have a problem because we paint murals all across the streets. Black Lives Matter, and systemic racism, and white supremacy. But our laws are still the laws. Our policies are still our policies. So I'm sick of marching up and down these streets sometimes. I'm sick of seeing places like Atlanta in D.C. where the mayor pit playing Black Lives Matter but increased their police budget by over 30%. Wow. But Black Lives Matter. But I also want people to understand that we are the only race that's forgivable for everything. And we need to stop. We're the only race who asks the government to take from something else just to fund us. Name what other race that has done that. Name what other subgroup that has, that has asked for that. Only people who are asking for that is black people. Damn, it's about time we demand it was due for us. No more, no more asking. We demand it. No more asking. We demand it. We, de we deserve reparations. And any person who believes that we shouldn't, we have to ask them. Why are you here? Ask them. We can give trillions of dollars to corporations. Trillions, trillions, trillions of dollars to corporations. But like Mr. Ham said, when we ask for reparations, they seem to never have money. When we ask for money to fund our health care system, they never seem to have money. When we ask for money to fund, to fund our urban educational system, they never seem to have money. And people scream that Jersey's progressive, but let me tell you something, Jersey's not progressive. We're the sixth most segregated state in this country. The seventh most segregated state in this country when it comes to education. Our urban communities are highly underfunded compared to our white communities. Like he said, don't believe me, look it up. Google it. Google it. Google it. Google it. It ain't fiction, it's fact. It don't mean nothing to paint Black Lives Matter when we asked for first degree murder in Minnesota, but not knowing that his policies in Minnesota was okay for him to put his neck on George Floyd. We need to understand the symbolism and actual change in this country. We need to understand the symbolism in this country compared to change. 
The night before crime bill, I'm mad as hell at Joe Biden, but I'm also mad at my black leaders because I also know they fought for that 94 crime bill. I also know our congressional, and I ain't gonna call them the congressional caucus, also went city to city and fought for that 94 crime bill. So as we hold Joe Biden accountable, because he was the co-author, I'm also going to hold every black elected official who also fought for that 94 crime bill. I'm also going to hold accountable every black elect every black leader and clergy person who went city to city, door to door, to fight for that 94 crime bill. Oh, they're still here today. You got Maxine Waters, you got Elliot Engel, hell, you even got Reverend Al Sharpton. And we gave him the key to this city. But I once heard somebody say, the virus in this city ain't COVID-19. The virus in this country is not COVID-19. It's systematic racism. It's the killing of unarmed black people. It's the racial wealth gap. It's the underfunding of our educational system. It's redlining. It's the fact that we can't get adequate loans. It's the fact that our, our elected officials constantly rebuild downtown but always forget uptown. Damn it, I don't come downtown. Because Dr. James is about to close and they don't have the, the arcade system down here no more either. So we're going to speak facts, we're going to speak truth, let's speak it. Let's speak it. Hashtag facts. So like I tell people all the time, let's hold our elected officials, our police officers, our clergy people accountable. Because damn it, they need to be held accountable. We also need to protect those who are also fighting for us as well. Because discrimination happens whether you know it or not, whether I wear the uniform or not, whether somebody else that we know wear the uniform or not. I come out here every time I hear a rally, I come out here and I march. Not because it's about me, but because it's about all of us. I'd be damned if I don't vote in November. I have, I have ancestors who died to make sure that I can vote. A grandmother who's 79, she's going to kill me, 79 years old, will be 80 next year, who fought to make sure that she can vote, her daughters can vote, her nieces and nephews can vote, her grandkids, son can vote. She remembered the 1967 rebellion very well. Me voting in November ain't just about me. It's to make sure that Trump can't elect another person on that Supreme Court. That's what I'm talking about. So he can't put not near one other person on that appellate division because he already got over 200 of them on there. I'm voting for LGBTQ rights. I'm voting for my son and my daughter to make sure that they don't have to fight the same fight that I'm fighting when they grow up. I'm voting in November for criminal justice reform. I'm voting in November because then we need to uplift our black women who are only being paid 60 cents on a dollar. That's why I'm voting in November. We need to uplift our black women. Not just in the city of North, but all across America. Because black men, let me tell you something, black women been in the forefront in every single fight in this country, including Black Lives Matter. That was led by black women. Look at anything that goes on in this country. It's led by black women, black queens. So I'm not going to hold y'all for too long. Cause I, <laughs> Cause I, can keep, I can keep talking, but I ain't going to hold y'all too long. This is about reparations. It's about signing people up to vote. It's about getting out the vote. It's about demanding I just do. And it's about holding everybody accountable. Everybody accountable. And let me make something clear. Let's stop the media 
causing division amongst us. Because at the end of the day, we're all still one people. I don't give a damn if Kamala is Jamaican, from Africa. I don't give a damn if she's from any of the Caribbean, but damn if she's black. I don't care if she's light skin or dark skin. I don't care if Larry Ham light skin or dark skin. But I'ma still fight for him because he's black. So leave that to the wayside. That ain't nothing but a, another form of division, another form of confusion to keep us down, to keep us fighting against each other. A lot of us sit out here and we, we, we quote Marcus Garvey, Harriet Tubman, Nat Turner, and the Black Panther Party for no, no, no a damn thing about what these, people, what these people spoke about. Because if we did, we would never fight against each other. Never. 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 Don't talk it, walk it. And if you ain't gonna walk it, get the hell out the way. Get the hell out the way. And that's one thing I love about my generation. We tired of talking and we tired of marching. We tired of talking and we tired of marching. But don't make no mistake, we will march. Because we will overcome. And by any means necessary, I'm gonna get my justice. By any means necessary, I'm going to get my justice. I have a dream that one day I hope I don't have to stand up here and ask for equal justice and equal rights. I don't. I hope one day I don't. But until we demand absolute justice, until we get absolute justice, until we get absolute equality, I'm going to keep marching. I'ma keep fighting. I'ma keep pushing. I'ma keep sounding off the alarm of my bullhorn. All day, every day. Until justice is served for black people, for black and brown people, for my black brothers and sisters, for my black queens, for my black kings. Because black lives matter. We demand reparations now. Thank you all and have a good day. Thank you.